It's bucket hat time. I'm Jan Howe. Welcome back to my channel. As you guessed it, in this simple sewing tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make these DIY bucket hats. I've been working on this design and pattern for a bit now, trying to tweak it, and I've come up with some great tips on how to make this project even easier, streamlined, and to get the best fitting results. These hats can be made reversible. The pattern comes in eight different sizes, all the way from three months up to an adult large. They can be made with regular quilting cotton, fabric, canvas, denim, upholstery fabrics. The most challenging part of the project is deciding what fabric to use. As you can see, I've made several already and I'm getting ready to make a few more. It's a fun sewing project that even a beginner seamstress can handle. And I'm going to be going over how to add a necktie if you want to do that. You can also add eyelets on the side of the hat for ventilation and looks if you want to do that. There are several ways that you can make these unique. You can monogram things on the hat, add a label, make great gifts, and what a great time of year to whip some of these up for your kiddos or even yourself. They're great to have out in the sun and they're so comfortable to wear. You can flip the brim up. You can add length in the brim if you want it bigger or for the brim to be floppier. So many options, such a fun sewing project. I'll show you step-by-step step how to do this. So dive into your fabric stash or go to the store and buy just the minimal amount of fabric and let's make bucket hats. Let's go over the items and things that you'll need to make your bucket hat. Of course, you'll need fabric. For this particular hat, I'm going to make it out of two pieces of quilters cotton. You can make this with a thicker fabric, even denim, canvas, home decorator fabrics, and even corduroy. You'll need some iron-on interfacing for the brim of the hat. You can also add the interfacing to the rest of the hat if you have really thin fabric and you want a more firm hat. You'll need fabric scissors. I love using these Wonder Clips or you can just use pins. You'll need a needle and thread just for a little portion of the project. And if you want to add a chin strap with a zip cord, you'll need the accessories for that. And I'll put the link in the description below. If you want to add some ventilation holes in the side with eyelets, you can purchase these eyelets and apply them to the side of the hat. You'll need your iron, your sewing machine, and if you want to add a label or a tag have that handy. You'll need the pattern downloaded and printed. This particular pattern has a lot of different options for sizing. Three months all the way up to an adult extra large which is kind of fun and so that you can make hats for the whole family. The first thing that you'll need to do is print your pattern and there's only one piece that you'll need to assemble because the pattern piece isn't quite big enough for one sheet and assembling that that piece is really simple. So after I've assembled that piece, I'll cut out the size that I want and the other two pieces, there's just three pieces, and then we'll start cutting out. So let's cut out the outside fabric, the main fabric first. I have folded up the selvage edge, so this is double and there's the fold down here. The pieces that you put on the fold, it's really important that you get it right on the fold, otherwise see how that will um, skew the pattern pieces and make them not true to size and kind of ski wampus. So we want to make sure that this folded edge is right on the fold and even. And I like to use um, pins for this. And after I pin it, I want to check it again to make sure that that is set. And, and then pin the other end. I'm going to check that again before I cut. Now to maximize fabric and less cutting, I like to fold the crown in half and then place it on the fold because we just need one of these. I'm going to place that on the fold right here. You'll be cutting, now it all depends. So if you want the hat, if you want the hat to be totally reversible like this, or if you want it to be like this hat and have the brim of the hat the same color so that when you flip it up you can see the 
fabric or if you wanted to it's all the it's all up to you so you can have another contrasting fabric showing or so you just need to decide what you want what where I am going to have the brim be both the inside and out out of this piece so I'll need to cut two of these otherwise I would cut one of this and one of the lining I hope that makes sense then you'll need one for the outer hat of the crown and two of the side panels of the outside fabric so I'm going to place that here and cut those out these triangles that are cutting in we want to cut them outward so I'll make a little notch there and then continue to cut around make another notch here and cut around Now for the lining piece, I'm going to do the same thing but minus the brim piece. And I'll need two of this piece on the fold. Now for the interfacing, like I said, you can interface the whole hat or you can just interface the brim. I'm just going to do the brim. I'll place it on the fold just like I did before and cut just one of these out. Now if you wanted it a little thicker and firmer, you could interlay, you could interface both of the brim fabrics, the, the outside and the inner. You'll get a feel of it as soon as you make one, how, what you like. And when you're cutting out interfacing, you don't need to cut out the notches. And just a tip here, interfacing will come in different weights. This is a kind, this is a lightweight interfacing. It also comes in thicker weights. So it's whatever you have or what your preference is. The next thing you'll do is apply the interfacing to your fabric pieces. So in my experience, the best way to do this is to place the interfacing with the bumpy side facing up, smooth it out, and then bring the wrong side of the fabric on top of the interfacing. It just seems to adhere better. All right, so if I were applying interfacing to these other pieces, I would do that now. I like to batch sew at the sewing machine so I'm not running back and forth and it just makes things easier. So I'm going to bring the right sides of the brim piece facing each other, lining up that edge. Let's clip that in place. Do that for both pieces. Open up the side panels and place them right sides together and we'll be sewing down the sides of the side panel. Now for the lining piece we're going to sew that just a little bit different. Bring the right sides together but we're, on, we're going to leave one of the sides of the lining piece unsewn in the middle of the section. So I'm going to sew down about an inch lift back stitch lift up my presser foot and bring it down here back stitch and then sew so there's an opening here for turning just on one side let's take these to the sewing machine i have threaded my machine with the corresponding color of thread and my bobbin i'm using a straight stitch and i am going to switch out my presser foot to my quarter inch foot will be using a quarter inch seam allowance. If I were using my regular presser foot, if I were to use that edge of the guide, it would be a 3 8 inch seam allowance, which I don't want. If you don't have a quarter inch presser foot, you can just adjust your needle to the right 
a little bit or use the corresponding line on your sewing machine for the quarter inch. This just makes it easier to follow and I really like it. So I'm going to switch that foot out for this portion. I'm going to back stitch at the beginning of the end of my seams. Here's my lining piece. Remember, I'm going to I'm going to sew that opening side first, just so I remember. I'm going to back stitch and then sew down about an inch on this small piece, and then lift up my presser foot and move it down. I'm going to leave about an inch and a half opening or on these smaller sizes that opening this seam is pretty small. Flip everything around and sew the other sides. We'll take it over to the ironing board and press the seam allowance. We're going to open up the seam allowances on the, all the seams that we just sewed and press them open. So I'm not making a crease, I just alter them and open up the seam allowance. Now this is the side that we left open but I still am going to open up that seam. This will make the process when we sew that together really easy because we'll have already pressed it open and top stitched it. And we're going to go and top stitch that right now. If we waited to the end of the project to top stitch, it would be really difficult to get into the hat and top stitch. So we're gonna do that right now. See the seam right here? We're going to just put our needle, our presser foot down and you can either use your, well, I'll show you over at the sewing machine. So take all of your pieces and we're going to top stitch the seam. I'm going to bring my presser foot so this inner notch of my presser foot is going to be on the seam so that that will give me that 1 8 inch stitch away from the seam. And you don't need to back stitch. Here's a little tip on how to keep the top thread when you're top stitching from nesting and getting all bunched up at the beginning of your stitching is to hold the top thread for a couple stitches and then it won't do that. Again, I'm following that edge. And then I'll flip it around, bring my presser foot down so that seam line is along the edge and sew down the other side of the seam. And you'll do that with the rest of your hat pieces. We have top stitched all of the seams on the side panels and the brim. I want to just show you what that looks like up close. The next thing we'll do is sew the brim of the hat. But before we do anything, we need to find the center point of the brim, the front. So this is going to be the back of the hat and this will be the front. But we want to make sure that we get that centered, line up those notches there. We're going to find that outer halfway point and mark it with a pin. Just taking a pin and inserting it in the fold there. We'll open that up, line up our back seam, and we'll be sewing around the outer rim of the brim and using lots of clips or pins.
this won't lie flat because of the way it's cut. You just have to make sure that those outside edges are lined up. Take it to the sewing machine, sew all the way around. So as you can see, I've already sewn the seam, but I forgot to hit record. So this is what it looks like, and then you can see what it looks like to sew around that edge. I'm using the edge of my presser foot just as a guide, and I'll backstitch at the beginning and at the end of the seam. So you just take your time aligning up that edge. And sew all the way around. Around the edge of the hat, we're going to clip the seam allowance, making sure that we're not cutting into the seam itself. This will help it open up and lay flat when we top stitch. So as you can see, I'm going about every half inch and making a little notch inward, being careful not to cut the seam itself. Turn the brim of the hat inside out. Just kind of push the seam to the outside and then we'll press that. So an easy way is roll your fingers back and forth just to make sure that that outside so that we're getting the whole seam pressed out because that will affect the size of the brim if you don't get all the edges pushed out all the way. I like to do a portion and then press it and then do the next portion. You want to make sure that the inside edges press are even as well. So another little tip, instead of licking your fingers to get that grippy, is to just shoot a shot of steam on the fabric and that allows you to roll it. The next step is to sew the side panels to the crown of the hat. So we'll do the lining piece first. Place the lining piece right side facing in. We need to find the halfway points of the crown. So we'll fold the notches in half and apply those pins in the fold. Do that with both. line up the darts and those darts indicate the front and the back of the hat all right now you're probably wondering how in the heck are you going to sew around that and make it fit but it does we're just going to take that side panel fabric and pull it out and just kind of pull it a little bit so it lies flat and it, you can ease and stretch this as you sew but see how that fits as you pull if you pull it up a little bit and then we'll put some clips there so you can add as many clips, but I just find it's easier almost to just adjust that as you sew. We're going to get those key points though. So we're going to pull that out a little bit. Now if you have, if you interface the side panel and the hat, it can get a little tricky because it's the, once you get that interfacing on there, it's going to be pretty, it's not going to be as stretchy as if you have, don't have the interfacing on there. So just something to be aware of. So you can take your scissors and just barely nick it, but you don't want to go too far because our seam allowance is so small that um, you don't have a lot of room for that. So, but it's really, it works really well for these um, unline or uninterfaced side panels. Another tip is if you are using pins instead of clips, 
pin on the side panel side. If you pin on the crown side panel or on that side, when you go to the sewing machine, it's just easier to have that needle so you can see where you're sewing and not sew over it. And that'll make more sense in just a minute when we go to the sewing machine. So we've got that pin pretty good and this is what it'll look like. Now we're going to go to the sewing machine and sew all the way around and you'll bring the side panel on facing up. You don't want to sew from this side because then you're not going to be able to see all the puckers that might be happening underneath. So we're going to, and it'll, it'll all make sense when we get to the sewing machine. Of course you're going to backstitch at the beginning and the end of the seam. So you can see how these little, makes these little puckers, but it's not pucker, puckered right up on the edge of the fabric and that's where we're going to be sewing. So we'll sew a little bit and adjust. I like to put, if your sewing machine has the needle up or down option, I like to have the needle down position so that when I stop, it will keep the needle. I can adjust and stay in line with the stitching. So I'll show you how that works. So when I stop, my needle stays down, or if you don't have that option, when you stop, turn your hand wheel so that the needle towards you, turn your hand wheel towards you so that the needle goes down and then you can lift up the presser foot and adjust if you need to. Just little tiny shifts. So the bigger hats, they'll of course be a bigger diameter of the, of the curve and it's not as quite as tedious, but these smaller hats you're working with a more a different curve. So as you can see, we'll just adjust that, trying to keep it as close and you might be stretching that side panel piece just a little bit and that's fine. You can just ease it. If you can take the fabric and pull it out to the left, that helps. So another tip is just to take the fabric from underneath and pull it if you need to. See how I'm using my hand underneath. trick is just to go slow. Don't get frustrated and just because you're not zipping through this, this is probably the most tedious part of the project. And ideally I would have pinned both things and then brought them both to the machine, but you get the idea. So we'll do that with the outer fabric as well. I have sewn both the lining and the outer fabrics. Now we're going to clip the seams just like we did before. Just those little notches inward, being careful not to cut into the seam. right side out and take the seam and just kind of finger press it towards the side panel and then we'll press it and we're going to top stitch that to keep it in place. And I find if you just take your iron and just do little and do little segments at a time Oh, 
I'm going to flip it back to the wrong side facing out because that makes it easier to sew. So I'm going to try to get this at an angle where you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm, look at the hat. The wrong side is facing out. I have my seam allowance pressed towards the side panel. And you want to, as you sew, make sure that that continues to not flip up. But I'm going to bring my presser foot down so that inner part of this presser foot is along the seam. So I'll bring my presser foot down. That'll be my guide right here. And like I said before, you can adjust your needle position if you need to, but I'm going to just top stitch there. And I have my fingers underneath so I can tell whether that seam allowance is where it needs to be. And I'm kind of pulling it out so that it stays flat. And I'll do the same thing for the outer piece. We're ready to sew the brim to the main hat piece. I have the right side of the hat facing out and we're going to find the halfway point of the brim. We're gonna find the front center. So I'll take that back seam and fold it in half and apply a pin in that fold to mark the front of the hat. Now we want to place the right side of the brim to the right side of the hat. So I'm going to find my, these are my side seams and these are the front and the, this is the front and the back. So the back will be applied here and the front here. Now if this, I have the same print on both sides of this brim. If I were having, if it was a reversible hat and I had a different fabric, we want the outer fabric to be placed against the outer fabric. So this double notch goes to the side seam of the hat. Then I'll go around and continue to add more clips as I straighten that out and have the edges line up. See how that'll pucker and wave and that's perfectly fine. If you have to ease it in a little bit, that's fine. And we're going to sew all the way around, but we're going to use just a basting stitch on this first round and then we'll add, then I'll show you how to add the lining. So I'm going to change my stitch on my sewing machine to a four millimeter in length instead of a 2.5. When I go to sew this, I'm going to flip the brim or the hat inside like this so that the brim is on top, the brim piece is on top so that I can manage that gathering and puckering and make sure that I'm not sewing over gathers. So that's the easiest way to do it. I'm going to find that back seam, bring the edge of my presser foot down along the edge. And just again, take your time to pull out that brim and those gathers. Keep the edges even. Get back to where you started, back stitch. I've basted that together. Now, if you want to add a label or a tag, like on the side of the hat 
or on the brim, this is the time to do that. I'm going to put just this little label on the side of the hat and I'll show you how to do that. If you want to make your own labels, which is really easy to do, I have a tutorial showing you how to make your own labels. So what I'm going to do is just do a small zigzag satin stitch around with white thread around that label. To apply the lining, take the outer hat and place it wrong side facing out. And we're gonna flip the rim inside. If you want to add the ties, this is the time to, to apply that. I have cut my cording to 38 inches. You can make that longer or shorter if you want. And then fold it in half and just stick that inside the hat. I have the wrong side facing out. I'm going to apply the ends of the cording to the side of the hat. That's the back and these are the side seams. Take the ends of the cording and line them up with the side seam and let it stick out just a bit. Take the lining or the reversible hat facing, right sides facing out, find your side seams and line them up. So we're putting three layers together plus the tie. And I'm gonna clip that in place. Find the other end of the cording and my other side seam and clip it in place. Find the front and the back notches, line up the edges Once again, pin it in place all the way around. Okay, I think we're ready to sew all the way around again. We're sewing through three layers plus our ties. And I'm going to flip this like so, so the lining piece is on the outside. So I can just, we're gonna follow that same seam that we sewed previously, just sew right along the same seam. I've changed my stitch back to a two and a half in length. I'm following that stitch line that we previously sewn all the way around. And take your time again and just feel with your fingers if there's any puckering going on and adjust it if you need to and continue to sew all the way around. I'm going to clip off the excess cording and once again clip, make notches all the way around to reduce the bulk and to allow it to turn evenly. Remember to be careful not to cut into the seam. Now I'll turn it inside out through that hole that we left open. Go ahead and reach your fingers in there and try to grab the, the other side of the rim and just start pulling it through that hole. Just take your time. Give it a good shake. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be so cute. Press the seam and then we'll sew the stitching around the rim. Now this is kind of challenging to, to press. There is such a curvature, but if you have one of these seam hands, this really helps with that. I'm just gonna place it inside there and just do a little portion at a time. We'll worry 
worry about pressing that top part when we're totally finished because most likely we're going to have to press some areas again. I just wanted to get that seam flat. Now what we're going to do is top stitch just about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Now when you we're going to start at that back seam on the rim, so all the way around, and when you get to the center of the seam, leave your needle down, and then you're going to what's called stitch in the ditch. You're going to stitch right down the center of that seam about three eighths of an inch. Leave your needle down, lift up your presser foot and pivot and we'll sew around. And then when we get to that point again, we'll sew down and stitch in the ditch and continue until we've made all this, the, the lines around on the rim. I'm going to put my regular presser foot back on my machine because that is going to give me that three eighths of an inch between each row, which I find is a good width to sew. I hope you can see I put this regular presser foot back on and it has these two little red lines. I'm going to use this red line on the right when I put my presser foot down to be my one eighth inch top stitching line. And I'll just eyeball that all the way around and then we will stitch in the ditch and continue sewing all the way around. Because this is top stitching, I don't want any nesting of the thread on the top because it's really hard to unpick that and make it look nice. So I'm lining up my presser foot. I'm gonna bring my presser foot down. Hold the thread for the first couple stitches, that top thread. I'm coming back to that seam. I'm gonna leave my needle down, lift up my presser foot, pivot, put my presser foot back down. I'm gonna sew right down that center of that stitching there, or that seam stitching in the ditch. So it's about three or four stitches. Out of the way and now I'm using the edge of the presser foot which is 3 8 of an inch leave your needle down lift up your presser foot pivot So the next row, we've sewn all the lines around the rim. We want to top stitch the side panel. So I'm going to stitch up just past that point where that seam was of the, the side panel and sew all the way around. One eighth of an inch from the edge. Pull that to the right. And now for the finishing touches to close that seam that we left open for turning, double thread a needle with the same color of thread, not the end. Just roll it around your finger roll it, pull it. We have a knot and we're going to do the slip stitch or the ladder stitch to close that off. I'm going to insert my needle just past the opening. So if you don't know how to do this slip stitch or this ladder stitch, it's a good stitch to know because 
a lot of my project and a lot of projects, sewing projects that you do, especially if you sew balls or stuffed animals or things that have, you leave an opening for stuffing things, this is a good stitch to know. So I'm gonna take the time to show you how to do it. If you already know how to do it, go ahead and sew it up, fast forward to the next section. So what we do is we're going to be taking stitches into the fold of that opening, just little tiny stitches. And then I'm going to go directly across to the other side and stitch in the fold. Straight stitches and then straight across. You can do them really close together if you want to. See, you can't even see them. See, that just close it, closes it up really nicely. Putting my needle in the fold of that fabric, that seam. And then we already pressed it and top stitched it, so it makes it really quick and easy to do. stitch right by where the thread comes out leave a loop that, that little loop I'm gonna take my needle and wrap it around a couple times and then gently pull it it'll make a little teeny knot right close to the fabric then I'm going to insert my needle right where the thread comes out between the layers I'm going to give it a final pressing and this Taylor's hand makes it really nice. Otherwise, it's really quite challenging to press something like this. So you can use your steam and really get into those curves and corners. Now, to apply your hardware to your chin strap, just fold it in half, take the fold, and shove it into that hole of the hardware. Poke it through there. And ta-da! So cute! Isn't that the cutest thing? So this is helpful if you're wearing them in the wind, if you want to put them on little ones to help keep it on their head just it's an option but works really nice i'll put the link in the description below where you can access this pattern remember it has eight different sizes and step-by-step -step instructions i hope you enjoyed that tutorial if you like the video make sure you give a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet make sure you do that drop a comment if you have a question Dive into your fabric stash or go grab a little bit of fabric and some interfacing and let's make bucket hats. Have fun sewing and we'll see you next time.